Hi, welcome to another episode of Home Studio Workshop. Today we're going to talk about Dobros. A Dobro is a magical thing. The first time I ever came across one was at an Americana jam night. And somebody brought one and I said, can I have a go, not knowing at all what they did or what they were tuned to or anything. And I picked it up and I loved it from the very moment I touched it. So to cut a long story short, I went and got one from a friend and uh, this was about two years ago. What a beautiful instrument. I'm still not very good. Um, Jerry Douglas doesn't need to worry. But again, as I said all the way along in these series of things, it's about getting some kind of noise out of the beast. And I can now get the kind of noise I want out of it. And uh, there's nothing else like it. You cannot replace the sound of a dobro. There's no way. So anyway, here's a little piece about getting started on a dobro. Enjoy. Right, this is all about the dobro. Here is a dobro. This is a square neck dobro. Which means that it's made for playing with a slide. Dobros are invented by a couple of brothers called Dopiera. Czech or Eastern European or something. And they took the first two letters of their name, Dio and Bros, and called themselves Dobros. And that's why it's called a Dobro. Now there's another kind of uh, resonator guitar, which is, uh, this is the resonator here, more of that later, which is called National. And everything I say about the Dobro applies to the National as well. It's your choice. The, your, your nationals are all the silvery, all overy ones. You've seen those before, you'll see them again. The thing that makes Dobros what they are, or resonator guitars in general, is the resonator, which is like a speaker cone set into the guitar, which makes it loud. Of course, the first thing you do when you get any kind of guitar is tune it up. This guitar is tuned to a open G, which we've talked about a bit in the previous episode about slides. This is not the same tuning as in the previous episode I showed you of an open G, which features a bottom D and then into the G. It's more like it starts from the fifth string and works up, if you know what I mean. Anyway, it's G, B, D, G, B, D. With the kind of clip-on tuners you get these days, it's a little easier to tune it like this rather than flat, which is how you play it. It tunes to normal, blah, blah, blah. But the best way to tune it is to tune the G and the D so they don't ring. Always tune up, not down. And the other G and the other D. Get them right first. And they tune to 440 on the tuner. The B strings are another thing altogether. They begin with B for a reason. They're a unpleasant mess. Because they don't tune to 440, they tune a bit flat. Which if you want to get into the, uh, the physics of the whole thing, look it up on the internet. But uh, there's a thing with tuning which where it's not quite right. I'm sure you know what I mean. Anyway, the Bs should be tuned a little flat. I normally tune mine 5 to 7 flat. And then they ring properly. I'll put a little chart up so you know what I mean. Anyway, you play it like this. You play it with a metal bar of your choosing. There are many. This one I play is known as a lap dog. <laughs> and it has, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it has uh, slightly angled ends. And I like it. Um, they have a groove on the top side which is where your finger goes and your, f your first finger flops in there 
and your other finger, the thumb goes on the side and your middle finger goes on the other side. As with the slide guitar, which I was talking about in a previous episode, number six, I believe, deaden the strings behind the bar. So the strings are deadened behind the bar by putting your fingers on them. That's really important. Otherwise, otherwise you get you get that harmonic ringing. You get both notes. Sometimes it's useful, not very often to be honest. Most of the time, dead and behind. The other useful thing to know about using the bar is that when you're picking the top two strings, then the bar should be all the way over there. When you're not picking the top two strings, move the bar back towards you so you're only covering the strings you're actually playing. Otherwise they will ring and make a horrid noise. And especially when you're playing fast. If you leave the top string open, it kind of rings. It, you don't want it. Anyway, so... Get used to moving the bar. A byproduct of that, which is really useful, is that you you can run open strings with the with the uh, with what's on the bar. Say you're playing the chord there, which is a um, D, and you bring it back to there. get a nice little B6 ring in a way. Take it down a tone, same two open strings but then you get a C major 7 or a C major uh, plus 7 or something, I don't know. But yeah, figure out ways to use the open strings, it's a good tip. Nice little uh, ninety thing going on there with the A. So all that's useful. That's that hand. This hand. You play with picks. You need picks to get the volume. If you play without the benefit of a microphone, as uh, I am not doing at the moment, you will need to be loud. It's loud enough, but you need to be louder. Um, I use two finger picks. And these are made by Pro Pick, and uh, they're very good. I like these. They have the wrong way round, but never mind. <laughs> that one. Usually I mark them. So they go like that. And a thumb pick. These are plastic as opposed to metal. This is a Dunlop M. It's the best one I've found yet. <laughs> thing with thumb picks is that uh, somebody pointed out to me on a video I saw the other day that you can have 10 of these and one day this one will fit you perfectly and you'll go god I love this thumb pick it is the greatest the next day it won't work you don't like it it hurts you pick up another one which you discarded the day before and it does fit 
who knows why. But that is the truth. <laughs> and all that kind of thing this need working on learn your notes hammer on and pull offs and all that kind of stuff are really good thing to remember always um, when using the bar is that as with the as with the steel guitar slide guitar that I mentioned the other day the bar should be right over the fret although obviously with a the neck as high as this one uh, the fret is uh, somewhat um, superfluous but the to get the to get the note to hit the note the bar should be right over the fret. However, because you're sitting here and the bar, the fret there is all the way over there, optical illusion, you have to be careful you are actually over the fret, even though it looks like you're over the fret, you may not be. So as you go down, you have to aim a little bit further towards the machine heads to get the, to be, to be actually over it, because your eye is telling you that something that isn't true. Does that make any sense? That is the middle, but from there it looks like a millimeter or two behind. So check that out. Make sure you are over the thing. Hit the note. There are lots of little patterns. into this as well. Not a lot of people use slants much anymore. Um, there are a few that are useful. Most of the time it's easier to go up to the next. Instead of going, you go, it's easy to go because it's more accurate. Well, as you probably noticed while we were doing that little piece, the uh, the strings and the guitar are a bit tired. So in the next episode, I'm going to change the strings and show you inside. And uh, we'll talk a bit about the resonator and the cone and all that kind of thing. See ya.